Diamond Matt channel, welcome. Right, today I'm going to be stress testing two rings and one's going to be soldered with solder paste, the other one's going to be soldered with our conventional solder panels that us jewelers use. Reason is, word is on the street that uh, solder paste joins are more brittle than the usual stuff we use. So I'm going to test them out and to try and keep it fair, uh, also, I've learned from previous videos where I've stress tested solder joints. Sometimes rings just stretch up and up and up and I run out of space on my ring stretcher. So I'm starting with a really small size this time. And to keep it fair, both these rings are made from the same strip of metal. Uh, they're going to be the same size and then also after I've soldered them up, I'm going to fully anneal them. So they should be starting from square one fairly. Uh, the only difference is one will be done with a solder paste, the other one will be done with a solder. So yeah, I'll be doing that. I'll get into it. I've just said thank you to two new patrons we got yesterday. We've got Tamara Hodges and Louisa Harvey. Thank you very much, guys. If you want to become a patron yourself, you get a shout out on the next upload after you join. You get access to all the new videos two weeks before they go live and public on YouTube. And you get access, if you become a classic or an official patron, you get access to all the full instructional guides I've made in the past. Uh, there's like 30 odd now, I think. And um, official patrons get all that plus exclusive content and ability to message me and I help people out with their personal little jewelry projects. So anyway, let's get into it. So when I first used this paste, I said I didn't have a nozzle. I did find the nozzle accidentally. Just I got out a big plastic bag, obviously is what these arrived in. And uh, the nozzle was in there, so I found that. But I don't actually have a cap for the nozzle. So one of uh, one, someone commented on a previous video uh, they said they hold it in water, so I've had a little cup of water. I just been have, I just had that like balancing against the the wall. It does help because it dries out and clogs up, and that use like a broken saw blade to sort of scoot it out. Anyway, so there's a bit of um, a bit of solder paste on there now. The solder paste melts at really low temperature, so I'm thinking I might have to use easy solder just to just to sort of match what this is. Notice I didn't anneal it, uh, I didn't flux it. I don't think you need to. There you go. It tends to do that, it sort of boils up and then just all floods all of a sudden. Yeah, it's a really low melt, melting temperature flux uh, solder. Can't speak today. So anyway, so that, that one done. Okay, next ring. Loads of flux. That ring's quite black, I hope that's not gonna cause me a problem soldering. Really, that surface needs a, a buff or at least a soak in the acid. It does get really fluxy. I always like really fluxing stuff. In gold and platinum, I don't need to go this crazy. The silver, I need to get things really fluxed for some reason. Chose my easy solder. Easy silver. I recommend doing this, like uh, get your small, very fine ball burr and actually scratch on there because, oh, that's not it. Anyway, I've got another bit. Uh, I wrote on there extra easy with marker pen and it just comes off really quickly where you're picking it up, putting it down, it gets scratched, it gets handled, it sort of rubs off over time in your fingers. So if you can actually engrave on your s solder, whatever it is, helps you out. And then you always cut it from the opposite end, obviously, so you're not cutting away, the writing gets cut away last. Anyway, whatever, do what you want. <laughs> so I'm gonna... And just dip that in there. Plonk a bit of solder on there. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, this is not going well. This has got glue on the end of it. I'm just snip that off. <laughs> not one of my slickest videos. <laughs> Thank you. 
you're wondering what I was doing there, I got it sort of melt with the solder and then that's just a paper clip I just touched it and moved it across and then you can make it flood where you want it to a bit bit of a bodgy way to work but uh, you've got to do it sometimes right so anyway so that's soldered up I'll put them both in the acid and then I'll shape them up file them up and then I'll re fully anneal them and then we'll start testing the joints out before I do that before I get them mixed up I let them cool down and then I'm gonna like I was just talking about engraving on the s bits of solder you use I'm gonna do that on the rings just so <laughs> I don't mix them up. <sighs> All right, so two rings, look, filed up, same size. Uh, I just filed them, I'm not bothering papering them. Uh, around the outside, I left them as they were as well, just so I can see the joins clearly, and just, just less work, didn't need to. So we got size K, next one, size K. Just double check the widths, I can show you this. 273, 273, 276, 27, 274. This is like hundreds of a mil, so that's pretty accurate. 276, 274, 275, so pretty, pretty samey widths. Right, I engraved on the back. This one is S. This is the solder join, so let's do this one first, and then we'll compare the paste. Solder join. And by the way, I'm not biased at all, like I don't, it's not like I'm trying to prove one's worse than the other. Um, just uh, I want to find out, <laughs> basically, just because someone said solder paste is more brittle, so I want to test it. Because I think I did, when I first used solder paste, I was like, ah, I don't really know what it's for, can't imagine using it. Wow, recently I made this skull chain. Every single link is a skull, and each skull has got a bar going through it with a solder both sides so that was a lot of soldering that solder paste really helped me out so much and it's so much faster really easy to do with the solder paste if i had to apply a little bit of flux and cut out a little chip of solder and do every single one that would have been way more time consuming um so yeah that's good so that's something i'm working on now it's all soldered up ready to go it's been in the acid so i'm just gonna I've got to darken the eyes and the side and the nose and stuff and just fix them up and make them look good. Anyway, so that's a, something I'm making in my own time. So anyway, right, so let's get these rings done. So what I'm gonna do is, I won't, normally if I'm sizing up a ring, I'll rotate it and turn it over. I won't do any of that. We'll just keep pumping it until it breaks. So we've got a nice small size. We're starting at the top before I've started down there and I've run out of space because the ring was stretching too much. Anyway, so, uh, so the solder joint stays there in front of me and let's just pump it up. Stretching up quite a lot. Stretching loads, come on. I want, really want the solder joint to break. I don't want the ring to just stretch. Ah, oh, come on. There we go, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Proof of how good my joints are. That broke the ring, not on my join. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. If the, if the solder paste join uh, breaks rather than the metal, then it's weaker. Uh, okay, so that's, look how much I stretched up. That size K started there, stretched all the way up there and snapped it. Would have got to almost Z, Y and a half before breaking. Well, actually quite impressed with that. So this is the solder paste. Again, starting with the join right in front of me, I'm just gonna keep pumping it. Exactly same technique, same amount of pumps. Oh, oh my God, yeah, it is so much more brittle. And that was really quick. So that broke at, that broke at Q, pretty much dead on Q. So big difference there. That was one, two, three, four, five, six sizes, and that broke. <laughs> so a close look at these. <laughs> look at the difference. <laughs> That's quite amazing, right? Uh, I never, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Like the join was not the weakest part of the ring. It just gave way. So a close look at that. I'm almost skeptical of there being like porosity or something in there. No. It just looks like it just stretched and gave away. <laughs> cool. So yeah, the answer is yes. Paste solder has proved itself a lot more brittle than the normal solder. So good news for us traditional solderers. Bad news 
for me because <laughs> I've soldered all of this with pay solder. But to be fair, like I totally trust its strength. It's only a, a bar soldered in on the ends. It's not like there is, it's being bent on any particular join. Uh, it's the strength of the silver. Is it like a, a ring in the middle of one of these skulls? There's a ring and a bar going through it. And the ends of those bars are soldered on. So it's the ring and the actual strength of the ring and the actual bar itself. The bar's just being held in position by the solder. So no problems with this, but yeah, something you might want to bear in mind if you're planning on doing a lot of soldering with paste. Um, think ahead, might be an issue it being brittle in the future.